Hello there guys, it's Maxo Diddley here and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to help you get that A in your practical exam. Today, we're going to be here with validating the postcode. This, I believe, is the hardest method of validation to do. It is probably the last thing you'll probably also type in the exam. And it's key because if you're going to use this going to input an address, you're, they're going to input a postcode and you're going to want to validate that postcode to make sure that they are actually telling the truth on where they live, or at least that their location of where they claim to live is reasonable. So let's get right into it. So first we're going to have a string with a postcode. Postcode. I've made this up, but I'm pretty sure it's it's valid. And it might actually exist. We're going to do SY137BA. I'm pretty sure this is valid. Make sure you, your cases are correct and that the spacing is also correct, otherwise it could actually be invalid. So we got our postcode, which will be the user input. Now we're going to create a method. We're going to do public static boolean val postcode. Then we're going to do string postcode. So what does this line of code do? What is this method? So a public static boolean. So it's going to return a boolean value at the end. We've called it val postcode because it's going to validate the postcode. And we're going to take in a, a string and we're going to set the string. And then we're going to set the, this string here to the value of what we take in. And we've called it postcode. This is the local variable for the method, by the way, and will be erased once the method is finished executing. So string postcode will take the value of postcode in this case. And postcode is SY137BA. So string postcode in this case will be SY137BA. And that's the postcode we will validate. Now we're going to do string rejects. And this is something you're going to have to remember. Or you could just use a different validation method, which I will make a video on. And there will be an I in the top of the screen um, for that video, which will probably be out in a day or two. If you can remember this, that's great. If you can't, you could comment this out or use a different method to validate it. I'm going to actually copy and paste it in. It will be in the description so you can copy and paste it as well for the purpose of this tutorial. So that's it. Basically, it's just a pattern that we can use to check our postcode too. Like when we're validating if it's a word. It's a similar thing to that, just on a much deeper scale, as there are many postcode combinations in specific and that kind of thing. These are this is for the UK postcode and any other country which uses the same postcode system as the UK. I have, don't know, so yeah. Anyway, now we're going to create a pattern object. Pattern PC. That's just short for postcodes, by the way. Just um, self-identifying documenters. Maybe annotate that PC is short for postcode. You can call it what you want, though. I'm just going to call it PC because postcode's already been used here as a string. Equals pattern dot compile rejects. So what does... It, oh, we need to right-click on pattern and fix the import. So what does this line of code actually do? So we're creating a pattern object. We're calling it PC. And this pattern object will basically just hold whatever rejects is, which in this case is this gibberish. Now we could just copy and paste um, this into here. I just think it's easier if we're going to be using this rejects in more places. Not in this case, but in things you might do in the future. I just feel like it's better to just have it as a variable. And it could be even better as a constant, but I don't even use constants because I'm just too lazy to write final before something in caps. But anyway, I prefer to have a variable. So basically, again, this is just we're creating an object which just holds this pattern. Right. Now we're going to do matcher, if I can type matcher, uh, we're going to call our matcher object matcher and we're going to set it to pc.matcher postcode. What are we doing here? Well, we're creating the matcher object and pc before the dot comes from our pattern object. Uh, dot matcher just goes after it and then in the brackets we'll put in whatever the postcode is we want to validate, which in this case is postcode here. Now we're going to do boolean result equals matcher.find. So what does this line of code do? Well, basically, matcher.find will return a true or a false. It will return true if this postcode 
matches this pattern and therefore is valid. If it doesn't match the pattern, then it's invalid. So this will return a true or a false, and we're just going to set a Boolean variable called result to either true or false to inform the user if the postcode is valid or not. And then we're going to do return result to basically return the value of result to whatever the method's called, which will be a true or a false. Now we're going to do a different way of actually telling the user. It's just a quicker way um, for tutorial purposes. We're going to do jOptionPane.showMessageDialog. Then we're going to do null. Um, I do not want all those arguments, I only want two. Then we're going to do... Then we're going to actually call our method where we would normally write text. So we're going to put val postcode. Then we're going to put in postcode. So what does this what does that actually do? So we're going to basically we're telling Java, okay, go to your jail champagne class, and we're going to show a message in a dialog box. It's going to be in the center of the screen. Then it's going to call, then we're going to call the method val postcode, pass in our postcode into it. Then it's going to do that, which we explained before. It's going to return a true or a false. This will either be a true or a false. So it's basically saying message dialog null true. Or it could be false instead of the true. So it's just going to print true or false. So this should be true unless the postcode actually isn't valid. Then we'll put in a valid postcode. But this should return true. And it returned true. Let's say if we put in duck. This will return as an invalid. It, yeah, it says false, which is invalid. Obviously, because duck isn't a postcode, it does not match this pattern. Anyway, guys, I hope that tutorial helped you validate postcode. You can literally just use this. Um, if you're in a different country, you can just use a different rejex pattern. I think this is this rejex pattern is outdated, but it really doesn't matter for an exam. Like, if you're using these things, and the examiner is going to be like, "Wow, this kid's clever." Let's give them that A. And then, then they'll also, or they'll be like, oh, this kid's clearly watched Maxo Diddly because they're clever. I'm going to shut up now. So if you've got any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. If you can learn that, the, how to do this, you'll breeze through validating a postcode and, like, you'll actually impress the examiner. If you can't, then there'll be another video on how to do another way of doing the validation. It won't be as good, but it gets the job done. So anyway guys, thanks for being a great audience and we will see you next time. Also be sure to leave a like and a comment as it helps and subscribe if you want to stay tuned for more diddly tutorials.